Hey guys, what is up? Hope everybody has been having a great day. Happy to be back with a 70,000 subscriber special featuring all 18 holes at the famous River Course at Kings Mill Resort. Please do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really does help me out. And I want to thank you guys for getting this channel to 70,000 subscribers. It really does mean a lot. It, it honestly feels just like yesterday. I was going out to my home course um, and just going to be recording myself playing nine holes because some of my Instagram followers said they would like to watch a golf vlog on YouTube. And now we're at 70,000 and we're still going strong. So I'm really appreciative to you guys for that. And um, also, if you guys want to check out my merchandise store or my Instagram page, I'll post a link in the description below. A lot of cool stuff on my merchandise store. And I do try to post daily on Instagram as well. So check that out if you guys would like to see what that's all about. And with that being said, let's hop into the video. So I started on the back nine because there was an event going on on the front nine and I wanted to get ahead of the event. So they let me go off the back, which was definitely made it for a more enjoyable round. So a pretty so-so par in that hole and now in hole 11. Really hit a bit of a heel pull there. You guys know the feeling when you catch one on the heel, it shoots out left. Gear effect kind of saved me there and kind of went in that bunker. And so, got a pretty clean lie though, so all in all, not too bad. And so, got about 160 yards left, 46 degree wedge, and gonna give my best swing here. And this, I would say this was one of my best shots the entire week I was down here. And I mean, this look, this was probably 160 feet in the air, and you'll see where it landed in a second here. I mean, it, it landed back there and spun back to probably about. 10 feet and I would say one of the strongest parts of my game is the fairway bunker shot meaning that I'm very consistent at picking it clean and hitting it a pretty predictable distance and a couple tips I would give you guys because I know a lot of people tend to struggle and the big thing is catching it clean that's goal number one is catching it clean so what I would recommend put the ball in the back of your stance lean back put the weight in your back foot what this is going to do is going to get you your angle of attack going up and your low point will be right at the ball because of the way you're setting your body and swing hard I would say maybe take one less club than you typically would because you're naturally going to swing a bit harder being an unstable surface on the sand and I found a lot of really good success hitting it like that and that's something I kind of just taught myself just through trial and error so give that a shot and let me know if that improves you guys' uh, fairway bunker shots and maybe even better yet <laughs> just don't hit into them that's what I try to do so I made a pretty nice birdie on hole 11 there, and sitting pretty here at 124 yards out with my wedge in hand. And this looked really good, like right on the money. And the pin was in the front, towards the front, I guess. And I took the bait, landed it in the front edge of the green, and spun it back off. And I would say one of the big things I've been working on is staying more connected at the armpits. What I mean by that is... I'm trying to make a swing where I can hold a towel under both armpits the entirety of the swing so that my arms aren't drifting away from my body. And one of the things that's been tough is it's kind of messing with my feel a little bit, but I expect that to come back as I continue to make reps with that swing, especially with my wedge game. And, you know, once I'm, as I get down to Florida, I'll be in a position where I'll really be able to dial that in. And that was just a bad putt. I had a really good read. And I pulled it, but the good news is I'm I'm now being a, I'm a, I'm now able to pick out the fact that I pulled it then and there, not just when I look at the playback after the fact. So that's a good sign. And here I was actually I'm not sure if you can see the guys down there, but I'm playing through a group, and so it felt pretty cool to stuck to stick stick one in there pretty close, and um, so this was probably about a 12 footer left here, and. Uh, so just kind of went up and hit a real quick putt. Didn't want to hold them up too much. And um, just a bit of a misread. Well, it is what it is. Could have I maybe had a better chance to make it if I wasn't trying to play through quickly? Maybe. But it is what it is. So now in hole 14, even par still, 374 yards. Sound up. Really put a good move on this one. <clears throat> really good shot shape here. Just a really nice butter fade. And this is probably one of the easier holes in the course. If I had to do it over again, I probably would have actually laid back a bit. Because I actually left myself a pretty hard shot here. Because 
I really had to land it on a very small part of the green on an uphill slope so the ball would get killed as it landed into the green without it rolling through. I hit a pretty good shot. It just didn't quite make it up to that top shelf, um, but it was definitely not the easiest shot I could have left myself with. And again, another pull. And see, I know I'm pulling it. And, um, you know, it's just a matter of time. Once the putter really gets dialed in, you know, I'm, I'm, those will start falling. Because the good thing is I'm starting to – the reads are really good. And um, so I only have myself to blame. So now in hole 15, even par, par 5. And I actually thought this was going to be in a little bit more trouble than it was. It opens up a lot more than it looks like from the tee over there. It's really just trees. So I really wasn't in that big of trouble off the shot here. And I actually had a bit of a chance at going for the green. Looking back, this was probably a bad decision. Because if you can see that little like drop in the tree line to my right there, that's pretty much the line where there's a hazard. And so I was trying to aim at that and pull it around the trees. And... Tried to do too much with it and just straight up cold topped it. And so luckily it did get far enough where I only had slight tree trouble with that tree directly above me. But that was easily fixed by just taking an extra club and chipping my 46 degree wedge. It's still in pretty good shape here. And this was right at the hole. Just didn't quite give it enough gas and it landed on the front edge of the green and kind of just stuck. And so have about probably 25, 30 feet here for birdie. Definitely have made a mess of this hole so far, but I've still been able to give myself a shot at getting a shot back here. And um, one thing I noticed, I was getting a little nervous over the ball on this hole because I hit a lot of shots that were really like dangerous shots, and I think it was starting to take a toll on my nerves that in that shot. So didn't really hit a great putt. Hole 16 here, probably one of my favorite holes in the course. Really put a good move on this. Just a nice little pull cut. And that's kind of the shot I'm going to be working with with my driver. I'm going to be trying to have a negative 1 to negative 3 club path with a face to path about plus 1 to plus 2. So that means the actual face is probably going to be square to slightly closed. But according to the path, it's actually going to be slightly open, which will result in a pull cut. And that's a, that's a, I really feel like that's a shot I can work with. And I'm... What me and my coach Bernie Nager are really focused on is developing a shot that has a very low percentage of getting me in huge trouble, meaning it's predictable, the spread isn't very crazy, and it's not going to do weird things that we don't expect to, for it to do. So by having a consistent shot where I pull it a bit left and cut it back, it's going to give us, I think, a really good chance to keep the ball in play, and that's going to be very critical moving forward. Left this one dead in the hole, and um, so still not a bad score on that hole. And this is probably the most famous hole on the course, hole 17. Um, after this shot, I'll show the little, there's a little bit of a um, reading slab to the left of the tee that kind of tells you guys all about this hole. This was, the wind really came off, and this is the James River to the right, so the wind really came off pretty strong and pushed, pulled my ball a lot left of the green so that was you know it is i should have probably played more of a hold off shot and you can feel free to pause the video if you want to check um out what those little signs are saying it was really cool i mean this, there's a lot of history and it kind of gives you some perspective you kind of look out into that river and just kind of put yourself back in the late 1700s or early 1800s and or mid 1800s rather and just kind of put yourself in the shoes of the revolutionary soldiers or um the Revolutionary War soldiers or the Civil War soldiers. Pretty cool to kind of take a step back and think about it. And definitely adds a little unique dynamic to the round. Hit a pretty good chip here. Caught it a bit flush, but luckily it spun pretty good. So I just had about a three-footer left for par here. Really good stroke. Definitely a stroke I'm going to be trying to make more in the future. Now in a hole 18, 450 yards, and all the way back. Sound up. And I put a really good move on this one. I was aiming for that little dip in the trees you can see. So I pulled this one a little bit. And I got away with it because I really hit it good. If, if this was about five or six yards left, I probably would have gone into the water. And then you can see. So I, that's the tee right there. 
and I landed it on that downslope, like right on that downslope, just in the fairway, and it rolled out really nicely. So I really bit a lot off of this hole. Turned a 450-yard par 4 into a flip wedge, which is definitely a big advantage, and hopefully I'll be able to utilize that a little more. Hit a really good wedge shot here, just a nice little trap draw. Threw it just a little bit past the pin and spun it back. You'll see where it lands here real quick. You know, a really nice um, view of the one of the inlets from the James River. And a uh, nice little view of the Kings Mill logo. I think I missed it a little bit, but you guys can see it. And so, uh, yeah, really close shot here. and Played this hole really well so far. And now i got about six feet left to convert here for birdie. Another really, really good stroke here. So I'll take that all day long. It's a really solid, op I guess for me, opening 9, 34. Took a bit of a lunch break, or I guess slash lunch slash dinner break. And it was like 3 o'clock when I came back out. And clouds had rolled in. I, and uh, I, I did notice them starting to roll in before I finished 18. But I didn't think it would be like a legitimate like full cloud cover. So it gets pretty cloudy towards the end. It, a it actually started raining pretty quickly here. But... The show must go on. So another pretty good drive here. And um, in the future, I probably would hit an iron off this tee just because there's some water left. But, yeah, and, I'm, and I, I do notice I'm still dipping a little bit too much on my chip shots. And it's just, I think, the anxiety of trying to make sure you clip it right off the, gr the ground the way you want. And, uh, you know, as the club pro guy talks about, I, I try to jilt at impact. <laughs> um, so I got to probably cut that out. And uh, so not a really good putt there. So kind of average, but a very average par. And now in a hole two, one under. You might actually, if you look at the camera lens, you might start to see some raindrops sticking on the camera. So I apologize for that. But it, it was like one of those things. I just stopped playing at, for like 10, 15 minutes at certain points at this nine because the rain like started getting a little too heavy. But I was eventually able to get it all in. And if you take a good look at that swing, that's kind of, even though I flare this one out right a bit, that's kind of the pattern I'm trying to make with these irons. Even at 200 yards out, you'll notice that it was probably a 10 o'clock swing with a low finish. And that's really critical for me because it keeps control of my ball flight and my spin. And this is a great chip here. This this lipped out. you actually be able to, the one good thing about there being water on the green now, you can kind of see the track of the ball if you look really closely. You can kind of see how it tracks right over the hole. So, had a kick in par there, which is really nice. But going back to what I was saying earlier about um, my swing on that 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 uh, tee shot, had I had my full swing I typically had, that could have been another 15 yards off line. So it was really critical for me to be able to shorten my swing a bit, but still maintain a full swing with my driver. And you know, the odds of me making a three on hole two with my full swing, if I missed the way I missed, would probably have been slim to none. And that's the difference is I was still able to make a three with my shorter swing because I didn't put myself in such a horrible spot to the point where I couldn't even recover. You know, I mean, Walter Hagen, I think, said it best. You know, golf is a game of recovery. And you really can't play good golf if you can't have control of your misses. And then furthermore, if you aren't able to recover from your misses. You know, tour pros, one of the things I've learned the most about playing with tour pros, and I've gotten the privilege to play with a lot of them back when I was a junior and now as, you know, they're on tour, their games don't impress me. What impresses me, well, I, I, that's that's incorrect. Their games impress me. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's amazing. But what impresses me the most, I should say, is the number they end up writing on the scorecard after 18 holes. That was the, and, and it's because they're so good at missing in the right spots and they're so good at recovering from their misses. They might not be the most spectacular, thrilling shots, but they do a heck of a job at getting the ball down without a lot of unnecessary strokes. That is the hallmark, in my opinion, of a successful tour pro, someone who can get a lot out of his game on any given day by not making stupid mistakes. And that's something I'm really going to be working on because I definitely make my fair share of stupid mistakes in the golf course. But as I've gotten better and more refined at my mental game with Dr. Rotella and my technique with Bernie Najar, 
and just playing more, I found that I don't feel like I've gotten much better, but my scoring has gotten a lot better because I think I've learned how to score again. And I'm, and I'm still in that process, obviously. And it will take a while. But I, I think if I can keep progressing at this point, at this pace, I think it's very possible that I could at least be close by um, next spring. But we'll see. It's all going to be a work in progress for sure. So pretty solid drive there. Just another pull fade. And hit this, uh, pull this one a little bit long left. And they're starting to get, like, and this, this is the kind of day where it was a little bit rainy at this point. But, like, it was a lot of hanging moisture. I felt like I was playing in a cloud. And what's tough about that is once the moisture starts getting on the green, on the ground, but it doesn't fall in, it just kind of settles on top of the grass. And water starts getting on the on the ball and in between the club face, that you can start losing control of spin. And once that happens, it becomes very hard to predict, you know, your distance control and all that stuff. So that was something I had to contend with as well. One good thing was the wind was basically zero, so that that I think kind of canceled that out. And now here's another example of my 10 o'clock swing from 180 yards with the seven iron. Kind of gives you an idea of what I'm trying to work with. And again, this wasn't my best swing. I pulled it a bit left, but I still it still went, you know, not in a horrible spot. Like, I ended up long left, and this was a really tough recovery shot. But with more course knowledge, I would know to not miss there. And that's a very critical component of being able to shoot a really low score, is avoiding missing in spots that are going to cost you a shot or more just off the jump. This was probably my best recovery shot of the day. Hit a really, really good shot probably about three feet and so here just trying to clean up the par really good putt here and I mean those are two really good examples of holes that I probably would have ended up with a bogey on earlier like three or four months ago those these the two par threes in this side but I walked away with a three because the tee shots weren't good and speaking of bad tee shots I this one got like 30 feet off the air out of the ground I just Scald us really bad, but I got away with it. But the tee shots weren't very good, but because my technique and my swing was geared to producing a more predictable, smaller miss, and my short game is a little bit better, I turned what probably could have been two fours very easily into two threes. And, you know, that saves two shots. And two shots is not an insignificant amount of shots by any by any means, especially when you get to scratch and, and better. So there's a couple of deer right there. I don't know if you can see them, but... It's nice to see some wildlife out and about. And now, blew this one a little bit long. Really not doing too good on this hole. And I'm just trying to bump it up there. And not really making any adjustments for how much wetter it is than it was earlier. That would have probably been within three feet, two or three hours ago. But now, with all the water on the ground and how wet it is, it's definitely not. And um, I thought I had this one canned, but it broke up at the end. That one really stung. Made the mistake of kind of mentally putting that one in the bag so back to even par on hole seven 525 yards par five sound up another really good pole cut and it's nice to really start i'm nice to see that showing up more and more and there was actually um funny story there on why i did that thumbs up there was a um, little road that runs just to the right of the tee box and Right after I hit, someone was driving up and said, hey, Kyle, big fan. So I just kind of waved. So that was definitely pretty cool. It's now only about 150 yards left with a 9-iron. And this is another shot where it really wasn't a very quality shot. But because it was flighted well and the technique was good, it still caught a piece of the green. And it ended up in not too bad of a spot from 150 yards out, which not a great shot, but again, I think the sooner you accept before you play the game that you're going to hit some bad shots, I think you'd be amazed at how much more enjoyable the game becomes. Because I think a lot of amateurs go to the course almost expecting or demanding of themselves that they play flawless golf, not realizing that tour pros hit, have so many mistakes in their rounds and they shoot great scores. And I, I think part of that stems from the way golf is covered you know, you typically only see highlights, you know, unless you're following, like, the final group, and obviously then every shot can be shown. But if you're just watching, like, a regular coverage of a regular round on the PGA Tour, you're going to see, obviously, the leaders, more of their shots. But if someone's, like, in the middle of the pack, not really a factor, 
but they make like a 50 footer that's going to be shown and i think it gives um unreasonable expectations for a lot of golfers because they they think that they're supposed to be able to do those things and not make mistakes and that's just not the case you know it, it really isn't so I, I think if i had to give anyone advice out there to enjoy the game more just don't be so dang hard on yourself you're gonna hit terrible shots i mean You've seen me hit tons of terrible shots, probably at least 15 terrible shots so far in this video, and it's not even, it's barely 20 minutes in. So, you know, I think if you accept that you'll hit bad shots, it does two things. One, you take pressure off yourself, and two, when you do hit a bad shot, and again, look at this, I just hit a dreadful, dreadful shot, 40, 30 yards left, and because I'm able to accept the result a little better, I'm able to be like, all right, I hit a bad shot, it is what it is. But then, as a result, I hit it to three feet and save par, you know. And I remember when I was a couple, a couple of months ago, if I hit a bad shot, I'd be out of it on my recovery shot. No chance i get up and down. And so those are the little differences that really make a difference when it comes to shooting your best score. You know, it's not about hitting a miraculous save from behind a tree to, to 10 feet or hitting a 400-yard drive. It definitely helps. It's, but it's not, that's not the most important part. The most important part is being able to emotionally recover from a bad shot by not expecting that much of yourself. Because then, if you hit a great shot, awesome. If you hit a bad shot, cool. You know, you'll be able to focus on your next shot, which is the most important part. So, finally hit a pretty good approach shot in on this hole to probably about, I think about 15 feet. So, I have a putt here to uh, get in at one under on the on the back I guess on the front side but for me the back side you can see come up that landed on the back edge and spun back like 10 12 feet so luckily it had a lot of grab on it so I have about a 20 footer for birdie here to finish out the round so a nice little right to left sidewinder made a pretty good stroke but I left it short unfortunately so I hope you guys enjoyed the video please like comment and subscribe and I will see you guys next time.